welcome back. I'm going to talk about those little chemical messengers called hormones. And I'm, begin, I'm going to begin by taking you through all the symptoms of a female having a hormonal imbalance and then I'm going to take you all through the symptoms of a male having a hormonal imbalance. So with a woman, when a girl gets her periods at the age of uh, eight or nine, that's a severe imbalance. Do you know what normal is? 16 to 18, but you hardly ever hear of such a thing today. Also very heavy periods, very painful periods. Premenstrual tension is not normal. Isn't that good news? And tonight I'm going to show you how you can turn that around. What do they say? Happy wife, happy life. Also fibroids in the uterus, cysts on the ovaries, polycystic ovarian syndrome, thyroid problems, breast cancer, cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, also heart disease and depression. These are some of the symptoms of a woman having a hormonal imbalance. What about a man? A man having a hormonal imbalance can result, can result in low sperm count, also PD, penile dysfunction, inability to hold an erection, also prostate problems. We didn't know what the word prostate meant 20 years ago. It's almost a household name today. Also too much of the female hormone can cause a man to be effeminate and too much of the male hormone can cause a woman to be masculine. These are the, some of the symptoms of a hormonal imbalance. So can you see when I saw a double up of the gut, and we're going to do that tomorrow night, I said to Thomas, oh let's do hormones because sometimes it is the missing link when someone's trying to regain their health. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to take you through the monthly cycle. I'm going to show you what disrupts it and then I'm going to end by showing you how you can get the balance back. Isn't that good news? Notice what our sex hormones are made from. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is a very important lipid in the body. And if a person's cholesterols are too low, guess what? It's going to affect the production of their hormones. From cholesterol, the body makes pregnenolone. From pregnenolone, the body makes progesterone. Progesterone is a key hormone because from progesterone, estrogen is made. From progesterone, testosterone is made. And from progesterone, all the adrenal hormones are made. They're your stress, your fight and your flight hormones. I'm going to describe this monthly cycle like a dance. And let me introduce you to the star players in the dance. Progesterone is one of the star players and progesterone is going to be wearing a green dress in the dance. And progesterone's nickname is Happy Hormone. So this is a very important hormone. The other player in the dance is estrogen, and estrogen's role in the human body is cell proliferator. And progesterone, by the way, is wearing a, a red dress, and progesterone's role is, sorry, estrogen's role, is that of cell proliferator. It is estrogen that causes the skinny young girl to develop into a beautiful, shapely woman. But if estrogen remains too high, the beautiful, shapely woman can get out of shape. I like an oestrogen to fire and water, good slave, bad master. Day one of the monthly cycle is the day that a woman begins to menstruate. Day one of the monthly cycle, progesterone levels are low. Day one of the monthly cycle, oestrogen levels are also low. But by day seven, oestrogen levels are rising, so we're up to day 11 now, and by day 11, Oestrogen is the star player in the dance of the hormones. Now we're going to go over to the stage where this dance is played out, which is the reproductive organs of a woman's body. So here is the, the uterus, here is the cervix, here are the fallopian tubes, either side, and here is the birth canal. And there are two ligaments there that hold the ovaries. So at this time of the month, oestrogen is causing massive cell growth in the lining of the uterus, causing the blood nests to once again be built up. Oestrogen is also causing massive cell growth 
in the ovaries, causing an egg to develop. Oestrogen is also causing a form of lubricant to be released in the birth canal. By day 14, a fully developed egg bursts forth from the ovaries. The little filaments on the end of the fallopian tube pull the egg up and the fallopian tubes are ever moving like this, causing the egg to come up, up, up. Now the hole where the egg bursts forth develops a blister and that blister is called the corpus luteum. I've written corpus luteum in green because corpus luteum is the main site of progesterone production in a woman's body. Can you see the importance of a woman ovulating? Because when she ovulates, corpus luteum is made. And when corpus luteum is made, that maintains progesterone levels and progesterone is the key hormone because it balances all the rest. So with the production, or the development I should say, of corpus luteum, now progesterone levels rise. Progesterone is now the star player in the dance of the hormones. Because there is no need for oestrogen anymore, because what we've got our blood nest, we've got our egg, our lubricant, and so the message is given to oestrogen, you can go backstage. So what effect does progesterone have now that it is the star player in the dance? Progesterone has a ripening effect on the lining of the uterus, putting the finishing touches. I liken progesterone to the plasterers and the painters. Progesterone also heightens a woman's mood at this time of the month, being happy hormone, to the point of increasing her sexual desire at this time of the month. But progesterone has another effect, and that is on the cervix. So I'm going to magnify the cervix for you. The cervix usually looks like this. Two lips with a mucus plug. Under the effect of progesterone, the lips come up a little tighter. The mucus plug goes and a special form of lubricant is released around the cervix. And this lubricant is designed to facilitate the entry of sperm up into the uterus. So you can see the stage is set for the entry of man. Did you know that between 200 and 500 million sperm are released with one ejaculation? That's incredible, isn't it? The sperm is the smallest cell in the human body. Now, sometimes up to half of that ejaculation comes back out. If the sperm meet this cervix, very difficult to gain entry. If the sperm meet this cervix, that lubricant literally grabs the sperm and shoots it up into the uterus. And it's got a long journey, long way to go. And some of them go down the wrong road. And some of them go down the right road. There's no road map here. Aha! They've found their prize, which is the egg. I saw a photograph at a seminar once of 15 sperm all trying to gain entry to one egg, but only one does. Sometimes too, that's when the twins share the placenta. Did you know that within a matter of days, there's a division to the first two cells? And in those first two cells, there's the DNA of a new human being perfectly intact. Incredible. There's a lot of discussion about when life begins. Knowing that, when does that life begin? <laughs> and that DNA never has been or never will be again. Every seven days, there's another division. And that gives this little union time to continue to travel down and settle into the, the wall of the uterus. Isn't it a miracle that you and I are here, considering everything that must be in place for the conception of a new human being? What happens with conception? The hormones change. The hormones soar. One of them is progesterone and it soars 200%. No wonder we often say about a woman who's pregnant, she's just blossoming. My daughter's baby was due three days ago. She sent me a photograph. She's quite large. She was in her garden with a bunch of daffodils smiling like this. 
I said, you look like a mother hen getting her nest ready. <laughs> now, if a woman did not enjoy her pregnancy, if she wasn't just blossoming, what would that indicate? It would indicate that she's lacking progesterone and that can happen and we're going to have a look at that in a minute. Now there are three estrogens. There's only one progesterone, but there's three estrogen. Estrone is called E1 and it has strong cell proliferator action. Estradiol is called E2 and it has strong cell proliferator action. But estriol is called E3 and it is a delicate estrogen. And it's in pregnancy that estriol levels rise. So in pregnancy, estriol levels rise and progesterone rises. Let me tell you something about sperm. When sperm enters a woman's body, it is an alien and her immune system rises to attack. But when sperm goes through the prostate gland of a man, it takes on an immune suppressant property. So when woman's immune system rises to attack, the sperm, the immune suppressant property of sperm, knocks back her immune system and sperm survives, otherwise none of us would be here. But woman's body has memory and every time her husband's sperm enters her, her immune system rises and says, "Ah, oh, it's husband, we'll just stand back. And sperm gets through. But can you imagine how damaging it is for a woman if she has multiple partners? and how damaging it can be in the case of homosexuality. What about a pap smear? What is a pap smear? A pap smear is a little scrape or a nick taken out of the cervix to test for abnormal cells. Let's say a woman has a pap smear. That night she is intimate with her husband. Just before she's intimate with her husband, her immune system is busily starting to heal the scrape. In the presence of sperm, what does her immune system have to do? step back. Now let's say they're intimate just before she falls asleep at night and the sperm stays there. It can't go, the immune system can't go back in the, on the job in the presence of sperm. Not till the morning when gravity causes the sperm to come away. Let's say she's a very sexually active woman and this is happening two nights out of three. Six months later she goes back to have another pap smear. They happen to take a scrape on the same spot. What are the results? Abnormal cells. What caused the abnormal cell? The first pap smear that was never allowed to heal. A woman should be told after a pap smear not to allow sperm to enter her for four weeks. Would it take four weeks to heal? Uh, not in a healthy woman. But some women go to bed too late, don't drink enough water, never exercise, have too much coffee and sugar and alcohol. It would take four weeks in that woman. One lady said, my husband can't wait four weeks. I said, well, he has to wear a condom, but the sperm must not enter till that pap smear is healed. So what's causing this disruption? But be let, before I show you what's causing the disruption, if the pregnancy does not happen, if conception doesn't happen, by day 26, the message is given to estrogen, go backstage. By day 26, the message is given to progesterone, go backstage. <clears throat> and when both those levels drop, the blood supply to the uterus is cut. And when the blood supply to the uterus is cut, the blood nest comes away and we are once again at day one of the monthly cycle. That is what it should look like. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that much anymore. Why not? Newton's third law of motion states that to every action there is an equal and an opposite reaction. There is always a reason. So why is there a disruption? Number one, in 1957 the first contraceptive pill was introduced to women. The 1960s is called the sexual revolution. Women wanted to be able to have sex without falling pregnant. But men and women have and are paying a very high price for this so-called sexual freedom. What is the pill? Well, the pharmaceutical companies grow acres and acres of Mexican wild yam. In a laboratory, the plant chemical called diostin that's in the wild yam is converted to progesterone. 
It's called progesterone because it has an identical molecular structure to the progesterone that is made in the, in the human body. So the pharmaceutical company can't patent it. So they add a few more atoms to one area and come up with a synthetic estrogen. They add a few more atoms in another area. Ooh, sorry about that. They add a few more atoms in another area and come up with a synthetic progesterone. This synthetic progesterone and synthetic estrogen are in the pill. And when a woman takes it, it comes into the biochemical pathway that her body uses to make the hormones and it causes a disruption. And the body says, what's happening? Must be pregnant. And because the body now thinks it's pregnant, it doesn't release the egg and the woman doesn't fall pregnant. But if the, if the ovary doesn't release the egg, what's not being made? Corpus luteum. For three weeks, the woman takes the pill and for one week, she takes a sugar pill. And when she takes the sugar pill, the body says, what's going on now? And there's a token bleed. And then a week later, the pill starts again. Body says, what, well, must be pregnant again. Could you see the disruption? Now, this is what the level should be. Progesterone number one hormone, estrogen under that. Month after month on the pill, no ovulation, no corpus luteum. Where's progesterone going? Down. Month after month on the pill with the synthetic estrogen, where's estrogen going? We now have a situation, sadly too common today, called estrogen dominance, progesterone deficiency. Good slave, bad master is now the master. What does the levels look like now? Where's estrogen? Estrogen's up here with its cell proliferator action, causing massive cell growth in the ovaries. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, cysts on the ovaries, massive cell growth in the uterus. They're your fibroids in the uterus, causing too much endometrium to grow, which causes the endometrium to start wandering all through the abdominal wall. There's your endometriosis. 20 cases of endometriosis 70 years ago. 10 million today in America alone. Why? <laughs> Estrogen with its cell proliferator action, causing massive cell growth in the breast. There's your breast cancer. Causing the weight gain in the torso. And high estrogen opposes thyroid function. How many women who are on the pill when they were in their teens are now in their 50s, 60s having, high, having thyroid problems? Where's, where's progesterone, by the way? Down here. And how does the woman feel a week before her periods? Watch out, she'll bite your head off. There's your premenstrual tension. And now she's going through menopause and she's got depression. She's having hot flushes all the time. High estrogen causes capillary dilation. And she has no desire for sex. And when she does have it, there is no lubricant and the cells lining the birth canal are tender. She is of all women most miserable. And her husband's secretary is looking better all the time. <laughs> and she goes to the doctor and he puts her on hormone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. So number one, the pill has and is causing massive problems. Got a fat pen here. And so the woman goes to the doctor who puts her on hormone replacement therapy. What's hormone replacement therapy? More synthetic hormones. Body thinks it's pregnant again, stops the flushes. The woman thinks, oh, how I love this HRT. I'm not getting hot flushes all day long. Six years later, she goes to the doctor. She has a lump in her breast. She's got breast cancer. The doctor takes her off HRT immediately. Why? He knows. He knows it can cause 
breast cancer. So you say to the doctor, why do you do it? He says, she was suffering and it brought her relief. That is true. And not every woman will get breast cancer. That is true. But if you ask a woman, what would you prefer, the flushes or the breast cancer? Bring on the flushes. I'll get a black lace fan. Mm-hmm. Most people think there are two alternatives. You suffer or you take the drug with its possible side effects. What I will show you tonight is that there is another alternative. The human body can heal itself. It can balance itself when it's given the right conditions. But there are many women who are suffering from these symptoms who've never been on the pill. There's more. What causes a chicken to be fully developed in five weeks? Growth stimulants. It's against the law in Australia to give growth stimulants to the chickens. So what have they done? Genetically modified the chickens so they produce more estrogen and still grow big. What about fish? Well, when you've got 80% of women on the pill or HRT, the sewage goes out to sea, the fish feed on the sewage, they're finding female fish with male tendencies, male fish with female tendencies. A bit scary, isn't it? Well, what about cattle? Well, in Australia, it's against the law to give ca for cattle farmers to give growth stimulants to their cattle. But one cattle farmer's wife, she said to me, they knock on our door once a fortnight, pushing the growth stimulants. She said, we don't, but many do. And they know when to stop so it's not picked up in the blood test. If it's in the meat, it's in its products. The cooking classes after these sessions will show you how to make lentils taste wonderful. And on Saturday, we're going to serve a luncheon where you'll taste some good food. Number three. I've met people never been on the pill, vegetarian, there's more. What causes plastic to be soft? It's actually some plant chemicals that mimic estrogen. Estrogen has a phenyl ring in its molecular structure. And that phenyl ring unlocks the door. It unlocks the door to let the, the, est the estrogen into the cell. So plastic contains a couple of things today, nonophenyl, it's got the ring, bisphenol A, it's got the ring. It's this phenyl ring that unlocks the door to get into the estrogen receptor side on the cell. Dr. Anna Zotto, she's a American endocrinologist, she was growing breast cancer in flasks in her laboratory. laboratory. Every time she injected estrogen, it would grow. Stop the estrogen, it had stopped growing. One morning she came in and it had grown overnight. She scratched her head, she contacted the people that she buys the flasks off. She said, have you changed? Your flasks, they said, yes, we have. We now have a flask that contains nonophenyl. It was the phenyl in the plastic that was feeding the breast cancer. So plastics, I think it's impossible to get away with pla from plastics, but be very mindful of your exposure. <clears throat> also herbicides, insecticides, pesticides, chemicals. All of these things break down to estrogen mimickers called xenoestrogens. Now let me show you the three different types of estrogen. So here are three cells and I'm going to draw an estrogen receptor site on each cell. Now this one's xeno. Xenoestrogen is 20,000 times stronger than human. <clears throat> so how big is it? It's huge. How big is human? It just fits nicely into the receptor side. What about plant estrogen? 
human estrogen is 20,000 times stronger than plant. So how big's the plant? It's a tiny little slip of a thing that just slips into the estrogen receptor site like that. Which is the one we need to fear? It is certainly not the plant. It is the xeno. You've probably read newspaper articles. If you have breast cancer or prostate cancer, don't eat soy. You've heard those? Don't eat soy? Do you know the estrogens in soy are so tiny? And they are synergistic, meaning they work with the body. So it comes to the receptor side and it knocks. And it says to the cell, do you need me? And the cell says, no, we've got enough. So the plant estrogen will sit in the receptor site. And you know what that means? This guy can't get in. And if it knocks and says, do you need me? And the cell says, yes, it comes in. It works with the needs of the body. Now, the soybean grown in America today is called Roundup Ready. Why is it called Roundup Ready? Because it's been genetically modified to resist Roundup. And a farmer told me one year, five times before harvest, the field is sprayed. That's five doses of Roundup on the soybean that's already been genetically modified, that is a dangerous soybean. So if you eat soy, make sure you read your labels and get non-GMO organically grown. Because it's a pity to throw soy out because it's an amazing food. Now if a woman has had breast cancer, she's usually told she has to be on tamoxifen for the rest of her life or at least five, ten years after, because it will block the estrogen receptor sites on the cell. Now what's just been acknowledged there? It's estrogen that feeds it. But it has its own side effects, whereas the plant estrogens do a much more effective job. What are your plant estrogens found in soy and red clover? And you can get a red clover supplement called Promensal. It's concentrated red clover in a tablet form. So that is an alternative to a woman who's been on tamoxifen is just to take red clover supplements. And red clover is very, very safe. It's what's called plant estrogens. What was the name of it? Um, Promensil, P-R-O-M-E-N-S-I-L. I guess you could, you could get it here. So can you see... There's estrogens and there's estrogens, but students, which is the estrogens we need to be cautious of? It's your xeno, your xeno coming from your plastics. And one of, the, one of the worst thing with plastic is if you warm it up. So hot soup into a leftover plastic container. There are some plastics that are BPA free. So bisphenol A is BPA. So, so have a look for plastics that are BPA free. You can get them and they're usually hard. You can't squeeze them. They're a hard plastic. It's the non phenol that causes the plastic to be soft. So how do we turn this around? If you don't turn the tap off, you're going to be mopping up in the other corner. So number one, eliminate. Stop the pill. How are we going to stop having babies popping up everywhere? Well, sex is two-part and contraception should be two-part. The woman's role, I believe, is to determine when she is ovulating and she will get three signs. One sign is that her temperature will change. So she takes her temperature before she gets out of bed every morning and she will find that it will it will go up and down a little bit, then it'll drop and go up onto a higher plane. And that drop and up onto a higher plane is an indication that she has begun to ovulate and her ovulation will begin around day 14. For some women it might be day 13 or day 15, but taking her temperature allows her to define it. The second sign is that her vaginal mucus will change. When estrogen's high, it's more white and not as profuse. When progesterone's high, it's clear and stringy and more profuse. So what a lady does is she makes up a chart and every day she monitors it. The third sign is that her cervix will change. Now when a woman first tests her cervix, she's got nothing to compare it with, but if she 
just tests her cervix every day and monitors it, as the weeks and months go by, she starts to see the changes. And she will find these three changes will come together and most women will ovulate about this week here. So that's the woman's role. The man's role is that when his wife says, I am unsafe, I am safe, I am safe, I am unsafe, he either masters the art of withdrawal or he wears a condom. My daughter Jessica and her husband Matthew were married for four years before baby Amethyst appeared. How nice. How nice for a young couple to have a few years together before the little darlings appear, yes? So you can eliminate the pill and, and safely have that birth control without um, taking toxic poisons. They're going to hurt the body and actually give a defective DNA to the children. One lady said, I have a hormonal imbalance. It's in my genes. Why is it in the genes? It's in the genes because the mother was on the pill. And the mother should not feel guilty about that because she didn't know. Mm -hmm. And you cannot be accountable, held accountable for something that you didn't know. And it was a few years ago, the pill had an anniversary of when it was first introduced and it was Time magazine, did about a six page article on it. And when you read that article, it must have been written by the pharmaceutical company because it hailed as freedom for women. Elaine Hollingsworth, in her book, she called it the mass murder of millions of women. Hmm? Now you look at the women who were introduced to the pill, the baby boomers. They're now in their 50s, 60s. How old are their daughters? 30s, starting to be 40s. That's the generation where the girls are dying from breast cancer. Hmm? They're the, they're the daughters with the endometriosis. They're the sons with the penile dysfunction and the low sperm count. Mm -hmm. So eliminate the pill. Eliminate HRT. This is how we turn it around. Number two. The liver has the ability to detoxify us from excess estrogen. And the liver will take the estrogen down one of two pathways. One pathway is the hydroxy-2 pathway. We'll call it highway 2. The other one is the hydroxy-16 pathway. We'll call it highway 16. The safe one is highway 2. It's taken out. And there are some foods, there are some herbs, there are some vitamins that encourage highway 2 and discourage highway 16. That's what we want. One is the vitamin B6, 9 and 12. Vitamin B6, 9 and 12 are the three B vitamins that stimulate highway 2 and inhibit highway 16. The highest source of our B vitamins is raw nuts, raw nuts and seeds. But if a woman has a hormonal imbalance, she may need initially to take a supplement. What can also encourage Highway 2 is the cabbage family because the cabbage family contain indoles. And indoles are a plant chemical that encourage Highway 2, discourage Highway 16. Licorice, I'm not talking about the lolly licorice, but the herb. If you've got high blood pressure, leave that one off because it can pep it up. And also flaxseed. Flaxseed contains lignans, and lignans encourage Highway 2 and discourage Highway 16. Number three, Australia sells a cream called the Anna's Wild Yam Cream. And the Anna's Wild Yam Cream contains diostinin. So here's diostinin over here. Let's show what happens. When a woman applies, or a man, the Anna's Wild Yam Cream to the skin, the fat cells take it up and it stimulates the body, the pathway that the body uses to make its own progesterone. So what this Anna's Wild Yam Cream does, it stimulates the body 
to increase its progesterone production. And if you increase progesterone and your estrogen's high, it'll bring it down. And if you increase progesterone and your estrogen's too low, it'll bring it up. And if your testosterone's too high, it'll bring it down. And if it's too low, it'll bring it up. Can you see it's your balancer? What if you go on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream and your hormones are balanced? Is it a problem? There is no known toxic dose of progesterone, but there is definitely a toxic dose of estrogen. Can you have too much happy hormone? I would like to suggest not. So how do you apply the Anna's Wild Yam Cream? To apply the Anna's Wild Yam Cream, you take a finger dip. We have carefully analyzed this. Finger dip almost to the first knuckle, into the cream, apply it to the inside of your arms one time, chest another time, abdomen another time, inside of thighs another time. So you apply it to the tender parts of your body. Alternate the spots that will keep the body reactive. You apply it every morning and every night for three weeks a month. If a woman is still menstruating, she applies it for the three weeks where she's not menstruating they're the three weeks where the progesterone is the highest and she stops for the week of menstruation. If she is not menstruating anymore, she just chooses one week where she applies the cream. Sorry, where she does not apply the cream. So three weeks it's applied and one week it is not applied. What about a man? A man applies it once a day and because men are not cyclic, he does not have a break. So women apply it twice a day, morning and night, three weeks a month. Whereas a man applies it once a day with no break. Why would a woman use the cream? She would use the cream for all the symptoms that I explained earlier. For premenstrual tension, for heavy periods, painful periods, for uh, ovarian cysts, for uh, fibroids in the uterus depression, for thyroid. So all of those things, why would a man apply it? For penile dysfunction, excuse the French, but one man said, this stuff puts lead in my pencil. <laughs> to help with low sperm count, to help control prostate. So you would use it for all of those things. If you put Anna's Wild Yam Cream into the web, you can order it straight from Australia where it is made. One lady said, thank you for giving my, my daughter back. At the age of 13, she grew horns. After two months on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream, the horns went in. Every woman that has breast cancer or has had should be on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream because breast cancer cannot happen if the estrogen levels are down. So whereabouts were those places you applied? Ah, Neck one time, face another time, chest another time, inside of arms, abdomen, inside of thighs. So basically the tender parts of your body. I have met many women, many menopausal women, their hot flushes have stopped. I've had some men come to me and say, oh, thank you for, for giving me my wife back. <laughs> I've now got a happy wife. Sometimes it's the missing link with weight loss. As I said the other nine, it might be wheat belly and it might be estrogen belly. One lady said to me, I've just been to the doctor. I have so much weight, I'm miserable. The doctor said, you're eating too much. She said, I felt like getting up on the table and slapping him because I hardly eat anything. I said, well, I've just found three problems. You've got a gluten intolerance, you've got a hormonal imbalance, what was the other one? It was the gluten intolerance, the hormone imbalance. Oh, that's right, and she was not digesting properly. I said, I think eliminate the gluten, we'll balance the hormones, heal the gut, you'll find out tomorrow night. And I said, you'll get results. She said, well, I feel like getting up on your desk and kissing you. <laughs> <laughs> she knew there was something wrong. And unfortunately, sometimes you'll go and they'll say, well, you must have mental problems. Huh? That's why every good doctor, every good 
nutritionist, naturopath, they will listen to you. You're living in the body. I have met women who've had migraines every month with their periods and then they've gone through menopause and they're still getting them and all their life they've suffered and it's actually a hormonal imbalance. Let me touch on one other area which I find is a problem with many menopausal women. It must be talked about and many people don't. But I'm going to talk about it because I've seen so many women helped. What about the less, the no lubricant um, for a woman having sex? And what about the very tender cells so it's too painful for her to have sex? Well, something's, something's getting very popular today that was developed in the Chinese dynasty for the emperor's concubines so they could be sexually fit for their emperors. It's called yoni stones. You put yoni stones into the web and you will be able to find them. You probably have to order them from America. They must be made out of nephrite jade. Nephrite jade is a very dense, smooth stone and it must be that. Now these yoni stones, so everyone can see, I'll draw them up here. There are three different sizes. The largest size Oh, maybe that's a little big. The largest size is about that big. The next size would be about this big. And the smallest size would be about this big. Now, these yoni stones are inserted into the birth canal up till they hit the cervix. So they sit like that. And these yoni stones are worn for one, well, you start with the largest, and it's worn for one hour a day for one week. How does a lady get it out? There are two little holes here at the bottom and you can put a bit of dental floss in there with a little string on it so that can be easily pulled out. Second week, two hours a day. Third week, three hours a day. Fourth week, four hours a day. Fifth week, five hours a day. The lady wears the yoni stone for five hours a day for five months. By then her pelvic girdle is getting very strong. What she does is every now and then she just strengthens her muscles against it. After five months of wearing the larger stone for five hours a day, she now goes over to the middle sized stone and she wears that for five hours a day for several months. By now her pelvic girdle is getting nice and strong and she goes to the smaller one. Muscle knows no age. So the fact that the muscles aren't strong is not an excuse. They can be built up. Now let me tell you of the results that I'm getting back from many women. I've had women say to me, I have lubricant now. Because the muscles are strong, it brings the blood to the area which feeds the glands that produce the lubricant. I've had several women say to me that the lining of their birth canal, their vagina is no longer tender and sex is no more painful. I've had women repair their uterine prolapse by, by wearing the yoni stone. You see, it's just strengthening the muscle. I've had women with lower back problems heal their lower back problems. I've had women who, one lady, since she had her twins, Every time she laughs, every time she coughs, she uh, is a little bit incontinent. She said after wearing the yoni stone for four months, she is no longer incontinent. In fact, the yoni stones are sometimes called kidney stones. But your pelvic girdle is a girdle that starts at your belly button, goes between your legs and it connects to your uh, coccyx. It is a girdle and it can be strengthened and it can be weakened. And what happens when a woman has a vaginal prolapse or a bladder prolapse? She'll go to the doctor. He does the best he can to try and patch it up with mesh and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Just start wearing the yoni stones and every day. That's what we should be doing every day, squatting. Now, when I got my husband to start doing this, he was not happy. He was like this. 
But oh, now he just up and down and up and down. That strengthens also the pelvic girdle. And tomorrow when we look at the um, gastrointestinal tract, I'll be also looking at some positions you can do to strengthen your pelvic girdle. Now you talk to anyone that works in aged care, the amount of men that have urinary incontinence, that have bowel incontinence. Now, sorry guys, you can't wear the yoni stone, you haven't got a place to wear it, but you can squat, you can squat every day. If you can't squat, do it little by little, just start going down like this. Just go little by little and strengthen your quads till eventually you can go down and start with against the wall. Against the wall is often the easiest to squat. You talk to the nurses that work in aged care, the amount of women with vaginal prolapses, with uterine prolapses, with um, bladder prolapses, it's not a happy place to be. And the poor doctors, they try the best you can. But who's got to fix it up? We do. <laughs> muscle knows no age. It's time to strengthen the muscles. Now the good news is about the yoni stones, they, each one comes in a little velvet bag. When it's taken out, you just wash it with soap and water, dry it, put it back into your little bag. And when your pelvic gore floor is nice and strong, then you can give them to your daughters. <laughs> I know women in their 30s who are getting help with this. And your doctor will love you because he doesn't have to try and patch you up. You've actually strengthened your, your muscles so that they can hold it. And you will be happier, everyone will be. And so the, the, uh, the yoni stones can once again cause strength to come back in those areas. The Anna's Wild Yam Cream helps to balance the hormones. What will also give power to this program is drinking water, exercising every day, eating a plant-based diet, going to bed early. I have seen many, many women and men once again regain their sexual health through implementing these things. That's the good news. How long should a woman be on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream? At least a year. How old does she have to be? She, she should wait until she's menstruating. One lady said, my daughter's 10, can I start her? I said, no, 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 well, wait until she's menstruating. I met a 90-year-old woman who was on it for osteoporosis because the progesterone boosts osteoblast cells. They're your, they're your bone-building cells. If you're not sure, just go on it. <laughs> I, will, I, I will answer questions now. I've got a whole pile here. And some of them I think were answered in this lecture. And if I think they, they will be, I'll say. How do I stop being addicted to sleeping tablets? You start to have to ease off them. You have to start to have to exercise every day. You know, the proverb says, a sleep of a laboring man is sweet. So high intensity exercise, check where you're sleeping, that there's no technology, that your pillows are fresh and clean. There will be a time where you will have to ease off the sleeping tablets. Um, that will not be easy, but you will get it. Are grapes good to take? I love them. <laughs> as long as they're organic and as long as you don't have a yeast problem and you're not conquering cancer and you aren't a diabetic, the grapes are good. But the grapes are high glycemic. Have you had experience with high-end autism? I have. I have. There's a book called Stop Autism Now by Dr. Bruce Fife. And he shows in that book, and there are several books that show this, you stop the wheat, dairy, refined sugar, 50% improvement. That's incredible, isn't it? And he also shows supplementing with coconut oil. Oh, by the way, I was just shown in the break that in New Zealand, apparently, the flu injection does not have the mycel in it, which is mercury. But it still does have the neurotoxins, formaldehyde and aluminium. What would you do for eye inflammation, red eye? We did touch on that last night, where I showed the eye bright and the golden seal tea wash, and also rubbing the eye lid and lashes with castor oil. So they're two things that can be tried. 
If you don't use table salt, iodized hulse or seafood, where do you get your iodine from? Do you know the crashing of the waves releases iodine and it travels onto the land so you'll find it always in vegetables that are grown near the sea. And in bread now, bromide is put in as a, a bread improver and that competes with iodine. So, so always eat the sourdough bread and make sure it's organic so it doesn't have bromide in it. And bromide is used as an insecticide spray on berries. So people that eat bread and people that eat a lot of, and how many people have smoothies and get the frozen berries? <laughs> then that can actually rob your body of iodine. If you think you're low, you can buy Lugal solution, an iodine solution. Put a drop on your arm, it'll make a brown smudge. Just watch how long it stays there. If it stays there five hours, your iodine levels are good. If it's gone in an hour, your iodine levels are low. Because if your iodine levels are low, it'll grab it. So that's a good test. Well, what do you do if they're low? Put the patch on every day till it stays for five hours. That's easy, isn't it? Iodine is the food of the thyroid gland. Does mercury in batteries or hearing aids affect a person? That's a very good question, which I'm afraid I cannot answer. Um, one would have to investigate that one. I did not know mercury was in batteries and hearing aids. I guess you'd have to investigate. Do you soak all of your nuts and seeds first? Apparently they release all the goodness first. I don't soak all my nuts and seeds. No, I don't. Some say there's a toxic poison in the skin of the um, uh, almond and you have to soak it to release it. Well, it's such a small amount that it doesn't really hurt. For people with digestive problems, soaking them and dehydrating certainly helps to make them more digestible. Mercury always gives off toxic vapour forever, and that is true. Would rock salt be okay as well? What you'll have to do is if you've got rock salt, get the phone number on the packet, ring them up and ask for a mineral analysis of their salt and find out how many minerals are in their salt. Can you best help or advise for polycystic? Well, this lecture has shown that. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, cysts on the ovaries, fibroids in the uterus, castral compressors, as well as following this program. How to help cramping legs help with withdrawals from smoking? Helping with withdrawals from smoking and cramping in legs um, the Celtic salt, remember it has three magnesiums and magnesium relaxes the cramping in the legs. So take the salt before every glass of water. And when going through smoking withdrawals, exercise is fantastic. Try and do that several times a day. Every time there's an urge to smoke, have more salt and another glass of water and it gets easier. Ah. <laughs> uh. Had arteries removed, what do you do regarding hormone replacement therapy? Has been given patches, but the cost is making it hard. This is, to implement this program here will relieve all the symptoms of um, an imbalance in hormones, which is why they give you HRT. I've seen many women, as I said earlier, their flushes stop. Hemorrhoids, how do you get rid of them naturally? You can get a slither of, um, of aloe vera gel the size of your little finger and freeze it. And then insert it frozen, you won't be able to insert it if it isn't, into your anus before you go to bed at night. And at the same time, um, squat. Get used to squatting, especially when you go to the toilet. And I'll explain that more tomorrow night. And also stop the wheat, stop the sugar, the refined sugar. The refined foods, start eating more fibre, that will help. How do you get low cholesterol up? And there's two questions the same as that. If you give the body the right conditions, it will naturally come up. It will naturally come up. The body will balance itself when you give it the right conditions. 
Bladder infections, how to get rid of. Does cranberry pills work? Cranberry does work. If it's not working, just have more. Make sure you stop all sugar. Remember, sugar will always feed bacteria. And golden seal. Golden seal goes through the urine and kills off microbes. And drink a lot of water. Water, water, water. That will help. Do you salt your veggies when you're cooking them? No, I usually salt them right at the end. What is the best source of omega-3? Is fish oil good? No, fish, fish has commonly got mercury in it and dioxin. Whereas the best source of omega-3 is your flaxseed or linseed, same thing, omega, um, high in omega-3. Also, flaxseed. Did I say flaxseed? Chia. Chia seed and walnuts. You can have those every day. How do you raise a low HDL? Said to be a her hereditary problem. Do you know with cholesterol you've got to check whether you've got exposure to mercury. You've got to check that your, your diet's balanced because the body will automatically balance. What type of water do you drink? Um, best to get a water filter on your filter because fluoride and and uh, chlorophyll, you've got to get that out of the water. Not good stuff. Uh, question on peanut butter. I don't eat peanut butter because peanut butter is commonly has aflatoxin in it. If you're feeling sad right now, macadamia nut butter, uh, cashew butter, almond butter, they're just as nice. If I lived like you, would my colour of my hair be like yours? <laughs> my husband is white <laughs> and he lives the same, but both his parents were white by the age of 50. So there is a bit of inherited there. My brother's been told by the doctor nothing can be done for the soles of his feet. Nerve endings have had it. Well, that doctor doesn't know about cane pepper compresses on the bottom of the feet. The cane pepper compasses on the bottom of the feet will increase the blood supply, which increases the, the um, which increases blood to the nerves, which wakes the nerves up. So you can bring it back. They are painful and keep him awake at night. I have people have had people come to our retreat. We do cane pepper compresses on the bottom of their feet, and in the morning they say that's the first night that I have had no pain in my feet. <coughs> so I do about every second night. Now this is interesting. I think we've got time. I've had breathing problems, went to the doctor, had tests, pulmonary heart disease, given a whole lot of drugs and um, was on it for three months. Also given Ventolin. Red wheat belly. Stopped the wheat, breathing improved, off all medication. Isn't that a great story? Huh? How many things have been diagnosed when it may be just an allergy to a food? 74 years of age, that's a fantastic story. What affects skin problems? Ringworms. Ringworms is a fungal thing and so tea tree oil on that can help. Grapefruit seed extract. It's usually sold as traveler's friend, that can also be put on it. Um, most skin problems have a have fungal aspect, so one has to look at that. How can we cure the cold sore virus? You can buy something from the health food shop and it's lysine, it's an amino acid, and often it's in a product called lipsine. Lysine, if you take tablets of lysine, that amino acid, that just stops the cold sore developing. My husband used to get them. I've never had a cold sore. I think you've either got it or you haven't. He never gets them now because he, as soon as he gets a little inkling, he throws down a few of the Lipsine tablets. It's got lysine in it. Apparently too, an ice cube, as soon as you feel it, an ice cube on it can stop it developing. Does no wheat also mean no wheatgrass powder? No. The wheatgrass is a grass and it's chlorophyll, so there's no problem with wheat, wheatgrass or wheatgrass powder. If the, ro if the body renews itself and cells replace themselves, how come we are growing old? 
We're growing all too quick. <laughs> Do you have a recipe for bread made with spelt flour? You can get one off the web. Just Google that. You'll find it. How do people safely remove heavy metals in the body? Um, fresh coriander is a metal chelator. This is a good time to put your coriander plants in and you can make pesto with fresh coriander, very nice. And also chlorella, C-H-L-O-R-O-L-L-A. -L 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 chlorella is an algae and it chelates metal. Also, as you can see by my lectures, you need to be having nice amounts of avocados, nuts, seeds, coconut oil, olive oil, because those fats help to protect the body against from the damage. What are the negative of getting all the teeth removed? This person's got quite a few root canals. Um, don't have sugar anymore. I guess that's a decision only you can make to have the teeth out and have um, false teeth put in. Some people have found that it's great. <laughs> it's, it's a personal decision but um, if you've had some root canals, the root canals really have to come out because they are dead teeth and the body tries to reject them. Could you please tell me again about the connection of um, heart arrhythmia and wheat? As I've shown you in one lecture, the, the uh, starch was changed in the hybridization of the wheat and the gluten was changed in the hybridization of the wheat. And the gluten is a very complex structure now and when a person has a compromised gut, they can't break it down properly. And so it's, because it's not broken down properly, it gets into the blood and the blood reacts and that causes the heart to go up. In fact, one test that you are allergic to a food is you take your pulse and write it down and then eat the food, chew it up 30 times and spit it out and take the pulse again. If you have an allergy to that food, your pulse will go about 16 beats above what it normally is. That's a simple one. What can I use to get rid of migraines? Often migraines are a result of a hormonal imbalance. Sometimes migraines are a result of an allergy, sometimes to wheat. And also migraines can be a result of a, a misalignment in the spine. That's why going to see an osteopath can help with that. What are the ways to heal after mercury damage? Well, mercury damages the nerve cells and the myelin sheath around the nerve cells is a fatty sheath. So what really helps nerve cells is, is good fats in the diet. And there is a herb called St John's wort and St John's wort is a nerve nourisher. So taking St John's wort can also heal the nerve cells. Done. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night or tomorrow morning if you can make it.